this is part two of our um, discussion of the um, chemistry that we're going to talk about in biology. Part still practicing my penmanship here. So we left off um, in the other video with ionic bonding and um, now we can also see that charges are going to be involved in other interactions in the cell. Um, we're going to show you in a minute about how water molecules have um, partial charges. So they're a little negative on some sides and a little positive on the other side. This is polarity. And those negative charges might be on this side of it, that's where the oxygen is actually, it might be attracted to um, an ion that's dissolved in water. And that ion, cation has a positive charge, so it'll be surrounded by water molecule. Conversely, if you have an anion, in this case it looks like it would have been the chloride ion because it's so big, um, it can be surrounded by the, the positive ends of the water molecule um, to protect that negative charge from the rest of the water molecules. This is called um, hydration, and this is why things dissolve. This is why when you put a salt, crystal salt, in water, um, it goes away, because the water molecules actually tease apart the ions that had been attracted to each other by the ionic bonds, and literally pull them apart. Hydrogen ions, now we're going to move on to covalent bonds, the next um, strong, much stronger bond that we know in chemistry. Um, so we go with the simple kind. Hydrogen atoms have a single electron in their outer shell. Um, remember that S orbital would like to have two electrons in it, so he's looking for um, to be satisfied with another electron. And instead of um, this hydrogen ion giving that away, um, it actually goes in and shares it, and then both hydrogen atoms believe that they have two electrons around them, and they're stable. So that covalent bond is where those electrons are shared, and at any given time, they could be anywhere between these two um, atoms, um, nuclei. And that's the, the basis of a covalent bond. Of course, things are never as simple as just a hydrogen. So let's look at our next favorite um, building block for organic chemistry, and that would be the carbon atom. Remember, carbons have six electrons. If you look at them on the, on the periodic table, they'll have two in their um, s orbital, and then they load up four in their p orbitals, but they really want two more to have a complement of eight there. And they could satisfy that by getting one electron from this hydrogen and sharing, one electron from this, elect this hydrogen and sharing, and so on. The final molecule is called methane at CH4, and that's got um, covalent bonds between all those guys. And we don't bother to draw that up all the time, of course, you know that. This would be the way that you're going to see it most of the time, a single line denoting that um, covalent bond between those molecules, or between those atoms to make a molecule. Uh, remember the Lewis dot structures you spent some time on. And then um, if you want to get fancy, you can look at what the structure is. In biology, one of the things that you're going to hear over and over and over again is um, structure and function. So this molecule actually fills up space and has a shape. And there you go with that. And that shape is recognized by different um, instruments in the cell, like enzymes that are going to do work with it or um, just other molecules it's going to interact with. So shape becomes very important, and covalent bonds in molecules help create the shape of a molecule. There's a lot of different um, elements that are critical for life. These are just a few. Um, and each of these, if you remember on the periodic table, have different levels of electronegativity. Um, Again, they put these up because these are the ones we'll talk most about. Oxygen is very electronegative, meaning it wants the electrons close to it. So it drags electrons closer to it in a covalent bond, making a polar covalent bond because the electrons are actually not shared equally. They share, but they don't share equally. Oxygen's always going to kind of have a little bit more of a negative feel to it. Same thing with nitrogen. We're going to see a lot of nitrogen in our systems, and they... Um, drag those electrons closer to them. Hydrogen, on the other hand, is a lower value, so if you have a bond between a hydrogen and an oxygen, the oxygen wins and it gets the electrons closer to it. 